Hey everybody, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about Christmas while we take a look at the story of some guys who spent more than a year celebrating Christmas. We can just leave the tree up all year, right? Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about Christmas, which is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Gotta be honest, I don't really feel like celebrating. Yeah, it's that weird week between Christmas and New Year's Day. I think we should call it Christmas Limbo. Or Twixmas. In Norway, the week between Christmas and New Year's Day is known as Romule, a peaceful time undisturbed by the outside world. I could use some of that. Oh, oh, it's, it's like that, uh, oh, what's the word, Huga? Huga is a Danish word suggesting coziness, comfort, and contentment. Ah, uh, this is better. It smells like ginger. I don't know. I still feel like I need some direction. Then I've got the perfect project for you. Well, why didn't you say so? Let's make it! So, what are we making? Something to give you direction. A compass. Whoa. Like the kind you take out in the trackless wilderness to find your way home? This one isn't very portable, but it will point north. So, what do we do? Step one, magnetize a needle. That sounds complicated. It's not. We just need to rub the needle with a super strong magnet. Start with 50 times on one side. Hmm. 10, 10, 8, 9, 50. Huh, are we done? Nope, now we need to magnetize the other end of the needle. So, flip the needle around, and then flip the magnet over to the other side and do it again. Done. There you go. Step two, cut a cork so it's one or two centimeters thick. You'll want a grown up to help. You'll also need a grown up to help with this part. Push the needle right through the center of the cork. A pair of pliers will help. What's next? Actually, this is it. That's the whole compass. Yep, we just need a big bowl of water. Final step, drop your compass in the water and watch it find north. Wait, how will we know if it's actually pointing north? Like this. Oh, a compass. Uh-uh-uh. You're going to guess where north is without looking. What? I never pay attention to where the sun rises or how to get anywhere. Ready, uh, set, northward. northward. Um, uh, north is that way. That, that, uh, it, uh, okay. Uh, due to the centrifugal force of the velocity of the light refracting on the walls, it's that way. Nope, it's that way. Uh, huh, that's crazy. Where, how does it know where to point? A compass works because the Earth is actually a giant magnet. The magnetized compass needle lines up with the Earth's lines of magnetic force. You know, my dad still gets us lost with GPS. Can you imagine making a long trip with just a compass? Speaking of long trips, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the first book of the New Testament, Matthew. God had a plan to bless the whole world through one family, the Israelites. But God's people kept turning away. At last, they were attacked by foreign nations. Even in this time of trouble, God spoke through prophets and promised to send a rescuer. Then, after hundreds of years, God sent an angel to an ordinary girl named Mary. Mary gave birth to God's son, Jesus, just as God had promised. And that's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. So far, God had used prophets and angels to spread the word about Jesus. But the God of all creation can use anything to send a message. And this time, God placed a special star in the sky. Far to the east of Bethlehem, some wise scholars spotted the brand new star. What star is that? I don't recognize it. Because it's off the charts. 
What about the ancient Hebrew scrolls? We don't know exactly how these wise men knew about the star, but they probably knew of Daniel, who had served as an advisor in Babylon hundreds of years before. They may have had copies of ancient Hebrew scrolls. A star will come from among the people of Jacob. A king will rise up out of Israel. According to Daniel, the time is right. <laughs> it's party time. <laughs> Gotta go see the new king. Here's the thing. These wise men may have lived more than 500 miles away from Bethlehem, but they packed up special gifts and set out on a long, long journey across the desert to see the brand new king. It would have taken them many months. Are we there yet? I spy a city ahead. It's Jerusalem. We can't be far off. Now, you can imagine, when these wise men entered Jerusalem with their fine robes and big questions, they caused quite a stir. Where is the child who has been born to the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose. Now we've come to worship him and party it up. This news traveled at hyperspeed to the palace where King Herod lived. Herod had been put in place by the ruling Romans, and he liked to think of himself as big stuff. He was not happy about the news of a new king. Where is this king, this messiah, supposed to be born? Uh, Bethlehem. How do you know this? Well, the prophet Micah writes, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are certainly not the least important among the towns of Judah. A ruler will come out of you. He will rule my people Israel like a shepherd. A ruler? Huh. Oh, really? Well, let's get these uh, wise men in here. The wise men were brought to stand before Herod. At what precise moment did this star appear? At the perfect moment in time. Just as it was foretold. Yeah, you want to come and party with us? Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, you report him to me. Then I can go and uh, worship him. Bethlehem was only about five miles from Jerusalem. The wise men must have been so thrilled to be so close. They were filled with joy when they saw the star again. There it is. This must be the place. Party time. The wise men probably didn't expect to find a king in an ordinary small town, but they were overjoyed to see Jesus, who was now a toddler. They bowed low to worship him. Please accept these gifts. I've brought gold. My gift is frankincense. I've brought myrrh. Don't try to spell it. These are gifts for a king. Exactly. These wise, important scholars didn't hesitate to give their worship and the best that they had to celebrate Jesus. That night, God warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Whew. So they went home by a different road. The end. What an epic road trip. Yeah, especially since they didn't know for sure what they would find when they got there. Exactly. It was an adventure into the unknown. So what's our part in the story? Well, celebrating Jesus isn't something for just one day or one month out of the year. After all, there are so many things wrapped up in God's amazing gift. Because of Jesus, we can have hope knowing God is faithful. And we can have peace because God showed us there's a plan. And we can have joy knowing God's love is for everyone. When you choose to remember God's gift and stay connected to Jesus all year long, you begin to live out these things in your life. It becomes easier to show love to God and to others. I mean, who says we can't have a little Christmas with our spring break or summer vacation? That's right. We can choose to celebrate Jesus all year long. See you next time. So here's the thing, celebrate Jesus all year long. He can give you the best direction. Do you think the wise men had a compass as well as a star? Nope, 
not have been to yet. Yeah, this would have been kind of difficult to pack on Camelback. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Compass, point us to more Rumule snacks. I think it's still pointing north.